What's up everybody, Justin here, back with a new prediction show for AEW Double or Nothing 2020 predictions. It happens uh, next Saturday in uh, six nights, Double or Nothing 2020 here. I'm not sure. I'm going to really... Uh, Try to watch. I'm going to just try to watch. No matter what. That's all I'll say. Also. If uh, AEW. I know they're available on Fight TV. And Pay Per View. And uh, BR. Whatever the hell. That service is called. BR Live or something. Or whatever. Or Bleacher Report. Dot com, whatever the hell it is that they're on. If they're charging the normal price of like 49 bucks or whatever the hell it is, 50 bucks, 40 bucks, 60, I don't know. But uh, that's that's asking a bit too fucking much. For wrestling fans during a pandemic. I, I don't like that. If they're charging 50 bucks during a pandemic. That's too damn much for a pay-per-view. When people are struggling. 33, Ameri 33 million Americans are out of work. Because of this. So, I don't think they should be charging no 50 fucking bucks for their pay-per-view during a pandemic. I don't. Maybe 20, 30. Not. I get it. They have to make some money and profit. But, don't charge uh, $50. Anyways, let's start my AEW Double or Nothing it would have been a really big show in Vegas if there were fans. We all know there will be no fans. It would have been a really great vibe. And just the fans would have been on fire and excited to be at Double or Nothing too. But there are no fans. Hopefully, like AEW's been doing on Dynamite, they're going to... I would hope so, still have wrestlers in the crowd or at ringside to make some noise. Here we go, the pre-show, which I will be, I guess, an hour before the pay-per-view, or maybe 30 minutes before, I'm not sure. So a private, on the pre-show of Double or Nothing, private party, haven't seen them in a long time. Maybe they didn't want to travel or couldn't travel. I don't know. Private party taking on the best friends. Uh, Chuck Taylor and uh, Tremberetto. Private party, I don't think, is winning. Best friends win. Eventually, please break break uh, Trent Barreto out of the tag team, get him to be a singles wrestler because Trent Barreto is damn good by himself. He doesn't need a partner. So as I said, best friends will win the pre-show matchup. So up first, let's start with uh, the casino ladder match. It's not a casino battle royal. It's a casino ladder match, even though they're not in Vegas. But the pay-per-view still called Double or Nothing. So they're going to have a giant chip, a poker chip, or a, I guess it's going to be big. I don't know. Well, one year ago, by the way. Double or Nothing, the first AEW pay-per-view, Double or Nothing, in 2019, John Moxley made his uh, debut. That was pretty fucking awesome. So the casino ladder match, I think it will kick off the show. You got Frankie Kazarian in it, the orange man, the orange juice man. 
Orange Cassidy's in it. Ray Phoenix, Darby Allen, Cole Cabana, Kip Sabian, and uh, Luchasaurus, and Scorpio Sky. There might be others. That's a lot of damn wrestlers in a ladder match. Only one will get the casino chip. And if you get the casino chip, you get a future AEW world title shot. So basically, it's like money in the bank with a giant poker chip that you could cash in. It's kind of a casino ladder match to get a future title shot. It's kind of like a ripoff of money in the bank, just a little bit. But a lot of wrestling companies for decades have uh, ripped each other off. Not all the time, though, but a lot of the time. For example, WCW NWA did war games. Did you see Vince McMahon ever try to do a war games? No, he didn't. Because he didn't want to. But we all know Triple H did for NXT. But that's because uh, Triple H is smart and wanted to put on a great gimmick match, which War Games is fucking great. It's a genius idea, Vince. You should have stole it and used it. But, uh, whatever. Props to Vince. He, he didn't want to take WCW's uh, gimmick matches. I, mean, I don't think he ever took any of them. He didn't take the Chamber of Horrors. Or war games. So my prediction for the casino money in the bank uh, ladder match is Derby Allen wins it. Up next, let's go with MJF Jungle Boy. I think Jungle Boy wins. You need to push them. You need uh, young new stars to push. MJF is young. He is still a new star. He's a rising star. But uh, Jungle Boy needs to win more. It will not hurt MJF at all to lose. So my prediction, Jungle Boy. For the AEW Women's Championship, Nyla Rose. Defending against H uh, Hakira. God damn it. I forgot I say her fucking last name. And I'm a fan of her. I don't know. Maybe it's because I don't watch AEW Live. I don't know. Hakira Sud... I can't even say it right. Anyways, you know who she is. She's facing Nyla Rose for the AEW Women's Championship. If you don't know who she is, look her up. Look up the card. You'll find out. She's really great. She's really talented. Man, I wish... If I could just hear her name right now, I would know how to say it, but I forgot how. So, uh, Nyla Rose, in my opinion, has been a boring, pretty bad champion. She's not really defended it at all, except once. And I get it, she wasn't available to be at all the uh, TNT Dynamite shows. She wasn't on them all since the pandemic. But to me, Nala Rose is a boring champion. They have to get the title off her, in my opinion. I don't think she's that good in the ring. She's a monster heel, but she's like on the level of uh, Nia Jax, in my opinion. I would not say Nyla Rose is much better than Nyla, Nyla Jax. I wouldn't. Not Nyla. Nia. Nyla, Nia. That could be a tag team. Anyways. Uh, Nyla Rose a little bit better than Nia Jax. A little bit, but not much. Anyways, I got a, a new AEW Women's Champion. That's my prediction. 
a new women's champion. Please get the title off Nyla Rose. I just, I'm not a fan of her in the ring. Not at all. Oh, by the way, the women's title match is no DQ, no count out. So that's good. Up next, we have another women's match. Britt Doctor. They got to say Doctor Britt Baker against uh, Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander is good athlete, really good, but I, I see her as a mid-carder. Britt Baker is a fucking star in my opinion. She is not my role model. Bailey is the role model, and Bailey was the role model first. Uh, Britt, you're not the role model. Maybe in AEW, but not in the wrestling world. I, I find that funny that uh, they started calling Britt Baker the role model after Bailey started it first. But I like Britt Baker. I like her as a heel. I love her promos and the heat that she gets. And she's good in the ring. My prediction, Britt Baker wins. Now let's go with the AEW TNT Championship. The TNT Championship. Stupid name for a title. In my my opinion really stupid name for a championship they should have just called it the AEW TV title not TNT championship that's stupid because what if in three four years you're not on TNT anymore what if you're not then you have to drop the title or call it something else or I'm sure it's TNT's idea like oh Nate, give us a title with our name on it that's stupid that's like W uh, uh, USA Network did uh, want USA Network asked for the 24-7 title so I guess USA Network has a 24-7 title for WWE AEW and TNT have the TNT championship. That's uh, two stupid decisions by two different networks to get their names or to get their stamp on the shows on their network. I guess they have a right to. They're paying a lot of damn money to Raw and uh, Dynamite. Dynamite getting a lot less, a lot less than uh, WWE gets for Raw. I think they get like over 250 to 500 million for on USA. I think uh, AEW was getting 45 million a year, the last contract. So the TNT Championship, that's like for real. That's like USA Network having the USA Network Championship or USA Championship on Raw. But they got their title. It's a 24-7 title because USA Network wanted it. So, uh, Cody. Cody Rhodes, Lance Archer for the TNT Championship. Lance Archer wins he should. Cody can take a loss. He can take many, many losses. He'll be fine. He'll always be over. I look at Cody like his dad. Dusty could lose a lot to Flair over and over and over. Didn't matter. Dusty was still super over. It did not hurt Dusty to lose. And it does not hurt Cody to lose. So Lance Archer wins, Jake the Snake might interfere and help. Arn Anderson will be in Cody's corner. I still don't get why a former horseman, Arn Anderson, I guess, I, I get he's a face, but why is a former horseman that used to feud with Dusty 
Why is he managing and the coach of Dusty's son? I don't get that. It doesn't fit. Anderson with a Rhodes. To me, it doesn't work. I don't like it. I like Jake the Snake with uh, Lance Archer. He's a great talker still. He could cut a better promo than 99% of the talent in wrestling today just about. So Lance Archer wins up next. So let's go with the, uh, I guess, the Stadium Stampede match. Uh, it feels like Stadium Stampede match feels like they're, to me, like they're trying to copy WWE with the money in the bank in the corporate office. That's what it feels like. They're trying to do too many gimmick matches. You know, I, I get it, AEW. You, you have the Jacksonville Jaguars Stadium available to wrestle in and do stuff in. But you don't got to use it. I don't know. I just feel like the stadium stampede match is kind of feels like Money in the Bank in WWE headquarters. I know it isn't, but it feels like it is the same type of gimmick match outside of in a ring. Stadium stampede match. Matt Hardy and the Elite against the Inner Circle. Four on four. I think the Inner Circle, my prediction, Inner Circle wins. They won't. I doubt it, but my prediction is the Inner Circle. But I doubt they win. But I'm staying with them. It's my prediction, Inner Circle. Main event should be for the AEW World Championship. John Moxley defends against Brody Lee of the god awful Dark Order Black Scorpion 2.0 stupid gimmick. The Dark Order is one of the worst uh, gimmicks I've ever seen. To me. Now, Brody Lee is the leader. That's fine. I like him. But, I don't like all the stupid mask men and all the other members that are nobodies. They're just jobbers. They mean nothing. I Actually, the Black Scorpion gimmick and character was better than the Dark Order, in my opinion. And the Black Scorpion was fucking a train wreck it, but it, I, I enjoyed some of it especially the uh, black magic that was pretty funny uh, Dark Order is bad if WWE did the Dark Order they would be fucking shit on big time fans would be tweeting like crazy WWE this Dark Order sucks and all that and I'm not shitting on AEW. I enjoy AEW. I watch Dynamite every week after NXT. Yes, I still watch every week. And I will continue. And I will watch their pay-per-views and support them. So anyways, uh, John Moxley, Brody Lee. Don't have the fucking Dark Order jobbers interfere. Uh, Brody Lee, I guess, could be a world champion, but it's not his time. John Moxley just won it in February at Revolution. My prediction: John Moxley wins and retains. Oh man, get Brody Lee away from the fucking jobbers and the masks that are nobodies. Oh, rem oh man, remember that short video? Or what, somebody, I guess, had a gif of it on Twitter. Or maybe there's a short video of one of the Dark Order jobber mask men punching Dustin Rhodes and totally missing him. Here's his head. 
the guy was going like this, hitting the mat, not even close. That was in fucking embarrassing. That was embarrassing. Uh, whoever that guy was, I hope they never used him again. I hope they, I hope he didn't get paid a hundred bucks for those god awful punches that were totally off the mark. Anyways, probably nobody remembers that, but I do. AW Double or Nothing predictions 2020 are in the books. Hope you enjoyed them. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. What are your predictions? Leave them in the comments. I will watch. It is Saturday. This coming Saturday, May 23rd, I think, or something. It's the next Saturday. Six days away, double or nothing, 2020. I'll be watching. I'll be tweeting. Follow me on Twitter at WWE NXT Guy. Bye for now.